This is Tabletop Deathmatch, a competition to find the next great tabletop game. It was entertaining. I don't think I would buy this game. Everything sort of flowed logically. Game designers from all over the country sent their prototypes to us at Cards Against Humanity. We picked eight finalists, and now we're bringing them to Gen Con, the biggest tabletop gaming convention in the world, where they're going to pitch their prototypes to our panel of industry-leading judges. One game will win a first printing paid for by Cards Against Humanity and be crowned the winner of Tabletop Deathmatch. Tabletop Deathmatch is an independent game design contest and web series by Cards Against Humanity. We do it over Gen Con and we film during Gen Con and uh, right now we're setting up and looking through submissions. And then one winner will be selected from those eight and the winner will get a first run printing. Games are important to me uh, because they are one of the main ways I experience community. It's such a simple thing, it's just these little pieces of wood and paper and they totally change how we behave for an hour. I find they're a really great way to get people together and interact in a way they wouldn't normally. Hell is other squires. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Smug, toadying twins always throwing shade. You'll show them as long as your knight doesn't fall over drunk first. Um, this game is called Night Nose, and it's silly and fast-paced, uh, a bluffing and press your luck game. And through Playtest, they said they could teach people in literally one minute. I'm Pete. And I'm Jasmine. And we are engaged. And our game is Night Shift. We made it together. Night Shift is a uh, fun, casual, kind of party-ish game. I think gamers would call it a, a filler. It's, it's a light game. It, it plays fairly quickly. The premise is that all the players are squires trying to curry favor with various knights. So they need to get the equipment and the items to the knights, uh, but they're not quite sure which knight is theirs. Yeah, and knights are also very picky. Some knights really want swords, other knights will be very upset with you if you give them a sword and you may be beaten. The fun part of the game uh, comes from the fact that you don't know what other players have given the knights. So if Jasmine is taking an interest in one of the knights and giving him equipment, is that because she wants to claim him later and get him and all his stuff? Or is she loading him up with schmuck bait in the hopes that I'm going to think she wants him and will claim him for my own? So there's a lot of bluffing. Uh, there's a little bit of press your luck. You know, am I going to get it this round or am I going to wait around and then hope I can still get it next round? And just, just a smidge of set collection. And yeah, a lot of fun tension at the table, particularly when some rat bastard takes the night you were setting up with all the good stuff. <laughs> Who you're playing with is just as important as kind of the game mechanics itself. Yeah, Jasmine knows my uh, inclination is to prep one of the knights for the cards he likes and to put points on one of them. So she's reasonably con confident that if she sees me taking an interest in somebody, she can probably nab him. Mm -hmm. Unless I'm messing with her and yeah. trusting that she's going to have that reaction. <laughs> and loading him up with fleas and uh, liquor and things he does not like. The three games that influence me most, I guess you could call them my favorites. Uh, first of all is Love Letter. Uh, I think it's just so simple and so perfect. And I just love how it's so stripped down and it's just a handful of cards. The other game that really influences me um, is Ticket to Ride. Just the, the mechanics of it and the elegance of how well it works and how easy it is to introduce people to. People just get Ticket to Ride. And I want that for my games. I want people to, to play the game and just to get it. Agricola is probably the last one. The theme is so different, or at least, you know, it, it felt so different when I first discovered it. I thought a game about farming, okay. And of course we made a game about knights. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody makes games about knights. Uh, oh. So last year I had a really great experience doing the death match. Cool table, it was a finalist, it didn't win, but I still had a lot of fun putting it together. Um, I've had a lot of fun working on it since then. I feel like I got to know a lot of the other contestants. We'll talk to each other. We're actually planning a panel um, at this year's Gen Con. 
I had such a great experience last year that I, you know, wanted to take some of my new stuff and enter it in again. Some of the stuff that I've been working on with Pete, just because I felt like those were kind of our strongest games. Mm -hmm. um, so we had uh, Rocket Cats in Space, yes. <laughs> uh, and then Abomination and Brecky Time. So we realized uh, that when we actually got into the death match that we have to ramp up very quickly because we submitted it the day before the deadline. <laughs> so we kind of, I knew from last year, like if we actually get in with this game, it's gonna be a lot of work very quickly. Mm -hmm. So because of that, I actually knew to like keep working on it and keep prototyping and keep testing. So Adi, we got all of the the files, thank you so much. Yes, thank you. We both love the background, especially. Yeah, like, yeah. It's so cool, it perfectly hits that like medieval modern thing we were looking at. Oh yeah, this is looking good. Yeah. And I try to put the texture on there too, um, but it just makes it, because of the text, and the text has to be so small because there's so much of it, it yeah. just kind of interferes, so it had to be left out. I was um, wondering about that. I figured yeah. there was a good reason. Yeah, because I, I was like, what other way can I make it happen? Um, I thought about if there's like an actual bubble, but the problem with the bubble is the um, the knights with the, the joust, it goes up above, and that's why the text kind of goes over it, and so it would interfere there. So it had to it had to be without it, unfortunately. Yeah, I am, I'm gonna be really proud to show this off at the contest. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's amazing to see your idea actually become something that I think people would pay money for. There's something magical about it. We, we type words into a computer and then the next week we get these really terrific icons and banners back yeah. and they don't look like something we cribbed off of <laughs> a free icon site because they're totally not. Right. And it's, it's been a really fun experience watching the game come to life. It's yeah. been very exciting. These are real cards. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I have games that do not have cards this good. <laughs> <Right. laughs> like, I can't believe, like, look at this. This all fit here. Like, this is... You laid that out. Well, this that... is the game. I love that it's so simple. And then, like, scoring on the back in a two-player. Not gonna swear like I did last year. <laughs> yeah, fuck it. Why not? <laughs> funny, 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 funny. I'm Pete Butler. And I'm Jasmine Davis. Uh, and this is this our is game night shift. shift. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, in this game, we are all going to be squires serving knights. All the knights have different personalities and different things that they really want. To begin night shift, a head squire is chosen at random. The head squire starts the first round by dealing out knight cards face up on the table, placing one more knight card than there are players. Each knight has their own unique set of likes and dislikes. For example, while some knights are happy to receive undergarments, others hate them. Each knight gets a random piece of face-up equipment from the item card pile. Knight Shift's item cards represent all the equipment a knight might need, everything from swords and shields to booze and companions. Each player is dealt a hand of four item cards, and then the head squire creates a face-down pile of item cards for players to draw from. Players have three options on their turn after they draw a card. They can place an item card face down on a knight's equipment pile, or they can peek at the topmost item card on a knight's equipment pile. If a player chooses to peek, they must play their next item card face up. Finally, a player may also discard an item card to claim a knight for the round. With no guarantees on which knight they'll end up with, squires must find the balance between giving some knights the items they'll want so they'll score well, and giving other knights items they hate in order to ruin it for the other squires. 
play proceeds clockwise around the table until it is the head squire's turn again. Once this happens, everyone passes their hands to the left, trading their item cards. Even if a player has already chosen a knight, they still trade their hand, and they still draw and place item cards in the remaining knight's equipment piles until the round is over. The round ends when all the players have chosen a knight. At this point, players reveal all the item cards their knights have collected. The knight who has the most booze passes out drunk and does not score any points for the round. The rest of the knights score positive points for having items they like, completing sets of items, for food, and for pairs of complementary items. However, for every item a knight received that they don't like, their squire loses five points. At the end of the round, the squire with the highest score becomes head squire for the next round. So what kind of uh, playtesting have you guys done with this game then? We haven't done proper blind playtesting. We've done playtesting where we're not playing, we're just explain the rules and then stand aside and let it play out. But we uh, haven't uh, found any takers for proper blind play testing yet. I'm concerned that the creators of Night Shift haven't done a blind play test. Uh, that means that they've every time they've play tested the game, they've always been there to explain the rules to the group. So we really don't know if someone were to pick up the rule book themselves, if they could play it easily. Booze is the highest scoring single item. Lights lo knights love to get their drink on. Well, unless they're Sir Jeffrey. Sir Jeffrey, he gets negative points for booze. So yeah. you want to keep feeding him booze even though he hates it? I ironically, yes. If if he, built into the game. he is a mean drunk. <laughs> you, you yeah, if you if you're gonna get have him drinking, you want him drinking entirely too much. <laughs> One of the things I really liked was that the cards had two meanings. I could either use them to hurt my opponents or to help me, so it kind of expanded my options. Only helmets, bread, and beer. <laughs> I don't know what he brings into battle. <laughs> I, like, I like how the flavor no, text has like the, the story of, of them as well. Yeah, the flavor text isn't important, but we thought it was we, we should come up with something fun. Yeah. Uh, playing Night Shift was awesome, it was fun, it was relatively quick once you understood the rules. Uh, it's definitely the type of game you could teach just about anybody to play, and it had a silly, great theme. There was a knight that was a sentient swarm of bees in armor, for instance. We're not concerned <laughs> about historical accuracy, not uh, with well, Sir Burton in the game. You'd be surprised, actually. That actually is historically <laughs> accurate, that's what... <laughs> I believe Norway tried that in the Middle Ages. <laughs> so the first thing we do is determine who's drunkest. Sir Geoffrey was the repository for all things <laughs> boozy. Can anybody beat five booze? One thing I really liked about Night Shift was even though I basically sucked the first round, like I could not have done worse, I still had a place in the game and then I got to destroy and sabotage other people's hands. I feel that this game is teaching a bad message because I don't think you should have this much, much booze and then go <laughs> horse riding. So I'm going to take a knight. I'm going to oh take boy. Sir Wine. No! <laughs> the biggest issue I had was the fact that there isn't a catch-up mechanic. There's no way for someone who's behind in the game to come back. And it kind of sucks if you go through the first round and you're so far behind that doesn't feel like you have a chance to win. And all you can really do is screw with people. When I passed that hand, I felt pretty excited about it. I was like, a hand of four booze, here you go. Uh, I really liked that although it was light, it did reward uh, strategic thinking a lot. You play a card and then pass your hand, which means if you could keep track of what you were passing, uh, it gave you a pretty big advantage and you were making very informed choices. Uh, dislikes, who got stuck with stuff they Me. hated? Okay. Oh yeah, oh, two cool. pairs of underwear and my knight doesn't wear undies. <laughs> okay, so minus 10 points. End of game, Jen gets a negative 15. Uh, Aaron, let's see, that's 25, 37. Oh, wow. I think you might be. That's gonna be our winner, I think. Chris got 17. Uh, Jasmine got 15. And I got two. Okay, so Aaron is our winner with 37 points. Nicely done, sir. I, I like this game, I don't know why. I don't know if it has anything to do with the victory, but. Night Shift was really fun to play. Uh, it's a really well-developed strategy game, and obviously Jasmine is a seasoned game designer at this point, and she did a really good job thinking through all the mechanics of this game. We uh, were pretty drunk when we made it. I was so. definitely drunk when we made that game. Oh, yeah. Do you like booze? Do you like underwear? Do you like swords? Then you'll love Night Shift! 
Hi, Jasmine. Hi, Pete. Thank you guys for coming back to Tabletop Deathmatch. There is actually a very large amount of information in play at any given time. I really like the design of the game. It's not solid. I think that's great. How is that not a great game? Mm -hmm.